Hey guys, what's up? It's Matt with 86. Now I had something totally different planned and slated for what I was going to be working on, but I ended up having a problem I needed to address. And I figured why not make a video and show you guys what I did and talk about it. Now there's a lot of ways that you can cool a GPU. You can leave the stock cooler that it came with. You can build a closed loop system, or even a fancy pretty hardline system. Now I'm not a big fan of that necessarily because I like to be able to get to my components and change them pretty simply. Or you can go with liquid AIOs and use things like Kraken G12. I think Corsair has one too. I don't recall what it's called off the top of my head. But I've, I've liked the aesthetic of NZXT stuff for a long time a lot better. But I did go with the Corsair H55. Now for a little over four years ago I got an R9. 290X and I liquid cooled it immediately with another H55 and the other day it appeared that the thermals were getting a little bit too high it didn't appear that way they were getting a little bit too high my kid was uh, playing my youngest was playing a game called Roblox not graphically intensive and the game uh, kept crashing and then the computer would shut down so we pulled open hardware monitor to take a look at that and I realized our temperatures, our thermals, they were getting up to 86 degrees idle, which is way too hot for it to do nothing. And then when he was playing his not graphically intensive video game, it was going up to 101 in about five to 10 minutes and then shutting down. Well, this told me a couple things and I had a theory, which I'll show you. Uh, my first theory was that it had gotten gunked up. Sometimes these AIOs get really gunked up and the water can't really move through there, like a clogged artery kind of. So we had taken that outside and we cut it just to see and the tubes were perfectly clean. This is what we originally had in there. This is the old H55. Got in 2014 it's been running pretty strong for a minute now but uh, my theory is that it gunked up inside so I'm about to cut that and we're gonna see if that was the case I sure do make these tough looks like I might have been wrong So my only next theory would be then that the actual pump itself failed. So that leads me to the other guess that it was perhaps pump failure. Over time these things get old, that happens, you know, oh well. I got about four years out of the original H55, so I went with another H55 to go ahead and replace on that because I don't see this card really standing by me for another four years. Technology changes, you guys know that. And right now with the prices of GPU to upgrade to this or anything that'd be really kind of on par with it would be about a GTX 1070, and I'm not willing to spend that kind of money right now as it is on the market. So I'd rather try to spend as less as possible and keep this card trucking as long as possible. Now originally, originally I used the Kraken G10 bracket with another H55 uh, almost four and a half years ago when I had put this thing together and installed it. So I decided I'm gonna go with the Kraken G12 bracket this time and another H55. When it comes to putting these two things together, you can get them for about less than $100. Get some Arctic Silver to put on there too to uh, help cool the GPU. Don't get an actual liquid metal on a GPU die. The reason you don't wanna do that is because you've got all those resistors around it and if it gets on there, you could easily short the die and you don't wanna do that because you'll ruin your card. Also, when you're working with an exposed die like that, be careful not to scratch it. The way that you have to put the Kraken G12 brackets on there can be a little frightening, I guess, to say the least, because you want to hold them as carefully as possible while you screw them in. Otherwise, it might slide across and scratch the die. And, and try not to do that. The Kraken G12 does come with some good instructions. It comes with mounting brackets for both NVIDIA and AMD cards. If you're wondering if your card is compatible with it, I'll post links down below. You can see if your GPU is compatible with the bracket mounting itself, as well as pump compatibility to see what pump you might want to put on there to kind of work in tandem with it. Now, if it's any testimony to how good this old, old, old H55 does, it does really well, and it's my pick. The R9-290X kind of goes back to the furnace days of AMD. When you wanted to heat a room, you didn't need to buy a heater, you needed to buy an FX processor and an AMD graphics card. Boom, you had it done. The Hawaii architecture is hot. It gets hot. H55 at idle keeps it around 44 degrees Celsius. When gaming, it can go up to the 60s and maybe 70s, depending on how much you're doing and if you're playing it really hard. And if you're playing at really high graphics and resolutions, you'll get into those higher temperatures. Lower is always better, but the highest I've seen is maybe low 70s, but usually in the 60 range Celsius. So that's kind of what we're looking for. And the H55 is quite capable of doing it. And as a testimony, the H55 was quite capable of doing it for about four and a half years. So why wouldn't I go with it again? Anyways, that's my recommendation if you go with that. So what we did is we put it back in there and I meant to show the thermals prior to doing it, but they were sitting around 86 to 101 degrees Celsius. After putting this in there, we're back down to a very comfortable low 40s. Now there are some things I'll mention. When you remove the heat sink off of your graphics card, be sure and of course disconnect the fan and set it aside. If you want to offset some of your costs, you might be surprised that some people pay $60, $70 for the original graphics card heat sink. So go ahead and post that on eBay, make some money back on it, and then invest your about 90-ish dollars into this. You can get one of these for about 50 bucks or less, and you can get one of these for 20, 20 or 30 bucks, I think, which makes it pretty reasonable instead of upgrading to a new card. So 
If that's something you're interested in, that's what I did. Installing it is, has its moments. The brackets I didn't feel like completely fit as well as they should according to the instructions, but it just takes a little bit of holding it gently, kind of keeping it loose and getting it in there. That sounds different than, than I wanted it to sound probably, but you know what I mean. Guys, if you have any questions about this process, it's not as difficult as it may seem, and uh, just be sure and post down below. I can maybe help answer some questions about it if it's something you're interested in. It's definitely a way to kind of improve performance and give you a little bit more room to work with the GPU. Uh, on top of that, it's quieter, it's prettier to me, and it kind of goes with the constructive flow of the system. Now, I'm not somebody that's into whole closed loop systems because I like my accessibility to my hardware inside, and I feel like it's easier to maneuver around these things rather than having an entire system pump configured inside. All right, guys, thanks for watching this one. Sorry about it. It's been a minute since I posted something. I had to tackle some issues with this PC, with another PC, and some other things going on as well. But hopefully, I'll be back with some more good content, or what I think is good content, and I will see you guys in the next video that I do. Have a great day, night, whatever it is, and I'll see you in the next video that I do. Just do this with my hands. This GPU is hot because it's AMD. Ha. The furnace days. The furnace days of AMD. It's hot because...